Welcome to my video on Kohlberg's debate on moral development. Kohlberg's debate was done in 1968 and is titled The Child of a Moral Philosopher. And it's all about how children develop model, uh, morals in their childhood. Kohlberg is a developmental study because development, the developmental area looks at how children develop and change over time. So as they get older, they, their behaviour, their thoughts, their ideas, their morals will change with them. Um, morality is defined as a principle of how we treat people and how we ought to treat people in, with respect to their rights, uh, their welfare and justice. And so morality is all about what's right and what we should be doing rather than what we want to do. Some background to Kohlberg's study, Freud's analysis of justice. And so morality is all about what's right and what we should be doing rather than what we want to do. Some background to Kohlberg's study, Freud's analysis psychoanalytical theory of the id, the ego and the superego, which are all parts of our personality. Um, these all come together to help a child develop their morals. The id is present at birth um, and can be said to be a nature concept. And um, the id consists of our instincts and our drives. Um, so it's all about what we want to do rather than what we should do. The ego is influenced by people around us and represents the ideas of our teachers, our parents, our friends, our family. Um, and it represents common sense and reason. The superego is our internalisation of these values of parents and society and things. Um, and it's the part of our personality that says what we should do, um, whereas the id is what we want to do. And Freud says that until the superego develops, we can't actually become moral beings because until, up until that point, we are driven by our id. So very small children um, are very much governed by their id. It's all about what they want to do and they have a tantrum when they can't do what they want because they don't understand that other people have needs and desires. Um, and Freud thought that there's tension between the needs of the individual and what society wants us to do. So it's that conflict between the id saying, this is what I want to do, and the super ego saying, no, this is what you should be doing. Um, and then moral development proceeds when an individual's desires are repressed and you do what's right rather than what you want to do. And this is then replaced by the values of those around us. So instead of what we want to do, it's all about um, what we should be doing, what society says we should do. And obviously that differs slightly between different cultures. Different cultures have got different ideas about what's right and what's wrong and what we should and shouldn't be doing. Another theory of moral development is Skinner in 1938. And he says, similarly to Freud, that our morals are socialised into us and that it's more of a nurture process than a nature process. Freud is a little bit of both because he says that the id, which is nature, is influenced by the super ego, which is na nurture. Skinner is similar, he says that it's all um, it's more nurture than it is nature and that it's um, socialised into us and it's the uh, external forces which influence our behaviour. Whereas Freud said that it was the internal and the external forces which were kind of at a battle with each other. So the internal of what the individual wants and the external of what society wants. So Skinner focuses on external factors which then influence our behaviour. Um, and the last theory behind moral development is Piaget from 1965. And his is a cognitive theory. So he says that moral development is all about the way that individuals think. It's not about how we're brought up. It's not about how we socialise. It's about how we think about a particular situation. And he argues that young children under the age of 10 um, don't have morals um, and can't understand the difference. Um, between right and wrong without linking it to authority. Um, so they behave in the right way because they don't want to be seen as um, a bad person and be punished by their parents. Um, it's not until they get to 10 and age 10 and above that they actually start to develop their own morality principles and they can um, start to bring in their own ideas about what they think is right and wrong. 
So if you think about cases such as uh, the murder of Jamie Bulger, um, he was murdered by two 10 year olds, um, John Venables and Robert Thompson, and he was a three year old boy who was taken from his mother and brutally murdered by these two, two, um, two boys at the time. I think they were 10 and 11. And um, there was a big sort of um, societal shift at the time, and you know, it was in all the newspapers, and we were sort of talking about, you know, do they actually understand what's right and wrong? According to Piaget, um, they would only understand what was right and wrong in relation to them getting into trouble for what they'd done. The fact that they didn't realise that it was actually the wrong thing to do. Um, whereas Freud would argue that it was their id saying, this is what we want to do, so this is what we're going to do. And that their super ego hadn't developed yet. A bit of an extreme example, um, but it shows how the differences between moral principles um, are sort of brought into society. So Kohlberg was inspired by uh, Piaget's stage theory, so Piaget's theory of like the pre-operational stage and the concrete operational stage, um, which we do later on when we do child development. Um, so Kohlberg's theory is based on Piaget's stage theory. But he sees moral development as more of a gradual process, whereas Piaget was very much, okay, you get to this age, and therefore you're in this stage. Um, whereas Kohlberg is sort of a little bit more gradual. So you can see on the picture that there are three different levels and six different stages in Kohlberg's theory. The first stage is the pre-conventional stage, and that's roughly about ages four to ten, which fits into what we were talking about with Jamie Bulger. Um, and that stage is called, that's the first stage, that stage is called the punishment and obedience orientation stage. Um, and this is where you behave in a moral way um, because you're worried about getting punished for not doing the right thing. So the second stage, which is also in the first level, is called the self-interest orientation stage. And this is where we behave in a moral way um, in regards to ourselves. So if um, it makes us look better or um, it has any, um, it affects us in any way, we'll behave in the right way. Um, to protect ourselves. Moving on to the second level, which is a um, conventional stage, and that's age 14 to 16. This is, and the first stage in this level is called the good boy, good girl orientation. This is the third stage in total. Um, and this is where we behave in a moral way because we want to be seen or spoken to as a good boy or a good girl. Um, and we base our morals on how other people treat us. So if we do something good and we are rewarded for that, um, that then that will be reinforced and we'll continue to behave in that way. Also in level two is stage four, which is the authority orientation, which is roughly around the ages 14 to 16. Um, and this is where we behave in the right way um, because we're worried about um, authority figures. So we might um, listen to what our teachers say, what the police say, what our parents say. Um, moving on to stage level, moving on to level three, which is a post-conventional stage, uh, which happens around the age of 17 to 20. This is stage five, which is a social contract orientation stage. And this is where we understand the rules of society and we behave in accordance to those rules. And then the last level is um, the universal principle orientation. And that's also in stage three and it is roughly around the same age. Um, and this is the last stage of moral development. And this is where people um, decide their own morals and they decide what's right and wrong based on what society and their culture dictates, but also they have their own ideas about what's right and wrong. So the way that Kohlberg researched his study was by doing a longitudinal study following the same group of 10, um, of 10 year olds for 12 years by presenting them with hypothetical moral dilemmas. Um, an example of a moral dilemma, the most famous one is called the Heinz Dilemma. 
Um, basically, Heinz is wife is dying of cancer. Doctors say that a new drug might save his, her life and he can get this from his local chemist. So he goes to the local chemist and finds that out that he's charging people to buy this medicine 10 times more than it's costing him to make. Um, so Heinz can only raise half the money that he needs to buy this medicine. So he explains to the chemist that his wife is dying and that she needs this medicine to save a life. Um, and can he pay half now and pay half later? Or will the chemist make it a little bit cheaper for him? The chemist refuses, says that he's the one who's discovered the drug and he's going to make loads of money from it. So what the husband does is later on, in the dead of night, he goes to the chemist and he steals the medicine. So that's a, a very, oh, one of the most famous moral dilemmas that we have in psychology. So it's talking about, you know, should Heinz have done that? Should he have saved his wife? Should he have stolen the medicine? Should he have tried to raise money another way? Should he have let his wife die? So the boys are given these kind of moral dilemmas and then they're asked questions about it. Uh, questions such as, should Heinz have stolen the drug? Would it have changed anything if he didn't love his wife? And what if the person dying was a stranger? And the responses that the children give um, dictates which stage of moral, dilemma, of moral development they're in. Okay? So the sample, we had 75 American boys aged 10 to 16 at the start of the study. They're followed up at three year intervals uh, through to the ages 22 to 28. Moral dilemma uh, development is also studied in boys from other cultures, such as Great Britain, Canada, Taiwan, Mexico, and Turkey. From the 75 American boys, they're given hypothetical moral dilemmas in the form of short stories designed to test their moral reasoning. Aspects such are, are included, such as motive given for rule obedience or moral action. Basically, why do they obey the rules? Um, what morals do they have? You know, should they behave in the morally right way or um, governed by their desires? They're also uh, tested on the value of human life. Um, and the way they do this is by asking them questions about people dying, such as the Heinz dilemma. So a child aged 10 might be asked, is it better to save the life of one important person or a lot of unimportant people? And then the questions change slightly for older children. So those aged 13, 16, 20 and 24 would be asked, should the doctor mercy kill a fatally ill woman requesting death because of her pain? And the responses that the children give during these um, moral dilemmas shows what stage of development that they're in. Uh, from the different cultures, the Taiwanese boys aged 10 to 13 are asked a slightly different story. They're asked a story about food. Um, for example, a man's wife is starving to death, but the store owner won't give the man any food unless he can pay, which he can't, should he break in and steal the food. And again, the answer that they give dictates which stage they're in. So if they were in stage five, for example, the social contract orientation, they would say, no, he shouldn't break in and steal the food because it's not right. Society says that it's wrong. Whereas a child in the um, authority orientation stage might say, no, he shouldn't steal the food because he's going to get into trouble. The police are going to come and get him and they're going to arrest him. Okay. So Colbert's results, he found that his stages were reflected in the scenarios. Fancy that. Um, the results showed that 50% of each of the six stages, a participant's thinking was at a single stage, regardless of the moral dilemma. So that supports the idea that we go through one stage at a time. They did show progress through the stages with age, which suggests that there is a nature element with moral dilemma, that we go through certain moral dile uh, development stages. Not everybody goes through all of the stages and reaches stage six. A child at an earlier stage can move ahead if a friend is at a higher stage of moral development. So if you are in stage two and your friend is in stage three, you can actually go up the stage in your moral development because you've been challenged um, by your friend's viewpoints. 
Cross-cultural findings, Taiwanese boys aged 10 to 13 give classic stage two responses. That's the self-interest orientation stage um, where they're doing what's right um, based on what they want to do or what they, you know, to save their own skin sort of thing. So Mexico and Taiwan showed the same results except development was a little bit slower than the US. Um, and that again suggests that moral development is nature rather than nurture. If every culture is going through the same stages at a similar time, uh, that suggests more of a nature aspect. Um, because in Mexico and Taiwan the development through the stages was a little bit slower, that suggests it's also a bit of a nature aspect in terms of the people around you, the society that you live in is impacting on your development. Um, he also found that at age 16, uh, stage 5, which is the social contract orientation stage, was more noticeable in boys from the US than Mexico and Taiwan, again, which suggests a nurture aspect. Um, between the US, Mexico and Taiwan, middle class children had a more advanced moral, uh, moral development than lower class children. Um, and this suggests again that a little, there's a little bit of a nurture aspect. Although they're going through the same stages, they're not going through them at the same rate. And actually, the class that you come from can actually impact the stage of moral development that you're in. Um, and there were no differences found between Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Buddhists, or atheists. So religion actually does not impact on moral uh, on moral development. So conclusions for Colbert study. There is a developmental sequence for moral, for moral development. We do go through stages in our moral development and we do go through these stages in a particular order at a particular rate. Um, each stage comes one at a time in the same order. Um, however, an individual may stop at any particular stage and not advance to the last stage. You are not guaranteed to get to stage six. That depends on your environment, who's around you, etc. Um, it is culturally universal, so it doesn't matter what culture you come from, you will develop morals. Um, and this is probably because all cultures have an idea about what's right and wrong. Um, middle class children move faster and much further than lower class children do. Um, but moral development is not affected by social, culture or religion. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed my video on Kohlberg. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Thank you. Bye.